Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, well, it's morning for me. It's 7:12 um, in the morning for me. For my guest, it is much later in the day. But uh, my name is Kat Cosgrove, and this is the Road to KubeCon. Uh, in the run up to KubeCon, we're doing a few special shows, interviews with people, um, talking about some of the colo events, uh, talking about CNCF projects in a little bit more detail than we might otherwise and on and on and on. But first, I have to say that this is an official CNCF live stream, which means all of us, including you in the Twitch chat, are beholden to the CNCF code of conduct, which essentially boils down to just be nice to each other, please. Um, anyway, again, I'm Kat, and I am joined today by Richard Hartman. Richard, good morning. Good afternoon. And how's it going? <laughs> afternoon yeah Fine. <laughs> i'm all right uh so we're here to talk about uh prometheus observability and uh specifically we're here to talk about promcon but uh first of all um usually when i host these shows it's a very like 101 level thing where i either actually don't know what a project does or i pretend that i don't know what a project does to try to get a more like broad kind of junior level I don't have any surrounding context understanding of what a tool is. So can you tell me a little bit about Prometheus? Yeah. Um, Prometheus is a time series database. Um, basically, you record values which change over time. It might be temperature at your home. Uh, it might be the number of times you opened your door. And both of those are not the cloud native examples, but they're rather um, easy to, to, uh, to visualize. Um, Basically, uh, Prometheus stores event. No, let me start. It's a time series database which stores only numeric data. Mm -hmm. So, if you have events, you can collapse them into numbers, like for example, counting things or or similar. But it's all numbers, which means you can do math with everything which is stored within Prometheus. As Prometheus has its own language with which you can query the data and visualize the data and export it via API and generate alerts and everything. You have this one functional language to do actual vector math on your data. Um, and it's pretty quick and pretty successful. Um, other things, no? Yeah, well, I mean, um, it has the same label system as Kubernetes, which is kind of convenient. Um, it's very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as if Borg and Borgmon had been designed for each other some long time ago. Um, oh yeah, sorry for the one one content. Um, there are two projects within Google Borg and Borgmon. Borg is the orchestrator and Borgmon is the monitoring thing. And the open source equivalents are basically Kubernetes and Prometheus. They weren't started uh, alongside each other, but um, from the initial design, they have been basically written for each other, which you can still feel in 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 today. Uh, like also, those were the two first projects to join what is now CNCF. Um, yeah, That's cool. The, that actually was a very thorough intro level explanation. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I also think that Prometheus has one of the coolest logos mm -hmm. in the CNCF landscape. Um, it's just it's very pretty. It stands out. So uh, props to whoever designed that logo. But you have a colo event for KubeCon. KubeCon is coming up. Uh, I'm flying down there next week. I assume you will not be there, mm. right? No? Will you be there virtually? Yeah, yes. I, yeah. I have, like, at PromCon, and I have two talks at KubeCon. Mm. So. Cool. Good. Well, congratulations on two talks at KubeCon. That's, geez. Good job. That's the limit. <laughs> yeah, but you got them both accepted? Uh, no, they are maintainer track and such. Um, uh, okay. okay. Still two is the limit. Um. <laughs> yeah. My talk got turned down, but it's probably for the best because it was going to be like an insufferable anime thing with Celeste Horgan. And um, maybe maybe the CNCF does not want to put up with our like weird anime stuff, uh, which totally reasonable. We're insufferable. But... Uh, Looking at Foston, looking at CCC, looking at looking at DebConf, um, those kind of talks can be nice. Um, <laughs> I, oh, we'll definitely get accept get it accepted somewhere. Like we're we're not going to let that one die on the cutting room floor. That's that's going to happen. 
So uh, if anybody watching this later wants to listen to me and Celeste Horgan talk about um, communications and uh, docs writing for small open source projects from the perspective of uh, an anime, hit us up. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not the subject at hand. You are. So in advance of KubeCon, uh, there are a bunch of co-located events with different sub subjects, different um, projects involved or running them. And Prometheus has one, PromCon. So what's, uh, what's up with PromCon? Who are the, the heavy hitters? What do you want to brag about and uh where can people register what's involved so um as it's a co-located event um basically through through the normal kubecon channels um mm -hmm. you must register for kubecon to be able to register for promcon um, both virtually and and in person um obviously same as kubecon itself we have more virtual than uh, in-person attendees um, sure. from the numbers which i've seen um which Kind of sense reason. We hope to flip it. Um, from what I know, it's it's slated to be uh, yet again the largest uh, pre-event, um, as per usual. <laughs> 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 Is it always the largest, really? Um, well, when we do it, yes. Like initially in 2015 or 16 in Seattle, 16, um, it, it was a co-located event. Uh, then we split it out into its own thing. Um, now for the last few KubeCon, uh, last two KubeCons, we've been co-located again because um, it made a lot of things easier to plan with. Um, sure. With COVID, basically. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we we have the largest room, which we will definitely not fill. Um, well, anyway, cool, the though. actual content. <laughs> <laughs> the actual conference. Yeah, the, the, the bragging is also important. I mean, we are on. Twitch no, so brag we, away. We, Brag away. I'm, I'm here to give you a platform to, to brag and to hustle for Prometheus and PromCon. So, like, if you want to brag, like, by all means, be my guest. Yeah, um, I, let, let's go to the, to the, to the heart. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the brag later. Um, so, um, I mean, PromCon is basically designed as, as the family meeting of, um, of the Prometheus community. And, and mm -hmm. that's, like... Family thing we deliberately designed for, um, which is not quite uh, get in pretty much any other conferences. Um, it's usually meant to be a mixture of one on one content and in depth. You have a little bit of intermediate, but usually we tend we tend to like we try to have it equal, but we tend to optimize towards one on one. I love so that so much. <laughs> Sorry. What? I love that so much. I think 101 content kind of gets like ignored a lot um, in in tech, especially by like open source projects that may not have a ton of resources. I know Prometheus has a ton of resources now, but mm. it's well, <laughs> you have more resources than some projects, right? But it's uh, it's a thing that I think gets ignored a lot, and that I think that that's a huge mistake to to ignore it because even an experienced engineer who's completely new to your tool or this type of tool does kind of need to be treated like a beginner and it can kind of, it can make projects seem uh, artificially more difficult to use at first than they, they really are. So um, mad, mad respect to actually focusing on one-on-one -on -one content. I appreciate that. But continue. I'm sorry. I mean, for, as to resources, if anyone wants to get involved with Prometheus, please do. We have so much work. <laughs> and also with documentation, with tutorials, like it doesn't need to be code. Um, we have more than enough work and we have not a lot of people who, who, who do the work. So anyone who is listening and wants to get involved, um, absolutely. Like uh, open doors uh, all the way. Um, and just for anyone who, who wants to explore this one-on-one -on -one thing, the, the way I usually structure the schedule, um, and that has worked nicely for all types of conferences, is you start with one-on-one, -on -one, you ramp up through intermediate and go to, to in-depth, and then you, you fall off again with more intermediate and uh, and one-on-one -on -one content at the end. And that's how you structure the day. Um, of course, it basically allows everyone to to get a little bit up to speed um, before before the really heavy stuff comes. Um, and then you have a 
a mellow end of the day. We couldn't do this uh, this time because we have this hybrid event and and uh, the AV staff needs, I think it was 15 to 20 minutes to switch between uh, virtual and, and on-site presentation, <laughs> which means we're basically having one large cut over in the middle of the US day, yeah. uh, which is how all the other events are, are structured as well, as far as I'm aware. Right, um, yeah. It is. So yeah, it didn't work out this time, but usually it works out. Um, yeah, for the for the more in depth uh, things, um, the most important one is sparse histograms, um, which is one of those things which have been asked for for ages, but which are super hard to get right. <laughs> um, and the thing is, if you do it wrongly you're basically stuck supporting that thing. Even if you deprecate it, blah, 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 you you cannot really get rid of it. In oh, particular, right. in our case, of course, historically, even when something is marked as experimental, we treat it as basically um, rock stable and are super careful about not taking it away because someone might literally depend on this with their alerting. Right. And Go that's... Uh, V1, beta 1. Sorry? The V1, beta 1 APIs in, uh, in Kubernetes, we have had you know, yeah. a similar, similar issue. Um, yeah, I, it's painful. Yes. I, I see the reminders slash begging uh, that this and that thing will be deprecated in Kubernetes. Please, please. Oh, they're please, removed please. now. As of this version, they are removed. So <laughs> they've been deprecated. The V1 beta 1 APIs have been removed in this version. So if you upgrade to uh, the the current stable of Kubernetes, yeah, you're not going to have access to a bunch of those APIs anymore. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm glad to see y'all are um, keeping that in mind and avoiding making similar decisions, even though uh, it may be may make things a little bit slower to release or or harder to build. But it's I don't know. Monitoring is not something that you want to really um, gamble on. <laughs> in my opinion, um, we've had some some rather dramatic events in the last couple of days with the Facebook outage and um, the Twitch leak this morning. So um, care about your tooling, mm -hmm. people. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the virtual hybrid thing is making events difficult, but it seems like y'all are handling it pretty uh, pretty graciously. Is there, uh, are there highlights that, like, big talks at PromCon that you want to shout out? Uh, things that you think are particularly interesting? Give us maybe some hints about announcements that yep. might happen around KubeCon? Yeah, um, let, let's split those two. So for for the PromCon uh, side, um, the most interesting one this time is, is sparse histograms and how they have been implemented, what this actually means for the users. Um, that's one of those things which are it's just super experimental, but still it is extremely impactful. And also it has huge impact beyond just Prometheus. Um, of course, um, Nobody will be will be shocked and surprised to hear that, for example, open metrics and open telemetry are also looking at high resolution histograms. And ideally, they are not incompatible, but actually right. work the same. Um, so this um, this will actually echo throughout basically the complete uh, CNCF ecosystem for for quite some time to come. Um, that, that that's the thing which I'm absolutely most um, excited about. Um, we have quite a few use case slash um, case study type talks this time, which uh, is nice that it worked out this way, um, where there are several companies and, and people are just talking about how they made it work in their own specific scenarios, where we're mm -hmm. trying to basically um, no approach should be repeated within, like, say, two to three years. So it's always new to to people who, who rejoin or who join the community or who watch the things. That's not getting, like, no, you shouldn't have the same thing every year. Um, we are usually splitting those between Cortex and Thanos, which are uh, long-term storage based on Prometheus and have overlap in the maintainers between those three projects. Um, so we have a few of those. Um 
yeah. And we also have other stuff like we have time scales. We have uh, we have three mm -hmm. uh, D and such, um, which are also not Prometheus itself. Of course, mm -hmm. one of the things we try really really hard is to be truly open and not artificially block anyone from from um, basically using what Prometheus built and and building their own business or or their own solutions on this, as long as it's compatible. Which is the perfect segue to KubeCon. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a sick segue. Are you sure you're not a like? pro streamer or like a developer advocate or something that was that was primo chef's kiss i have been running conferences for <laughs> over a decade mc them for ages like <laughs> at some point practice and raw talent yeah well done that's a mistake but thank you <laughs> you're welcome so i did submit something to to promcon but that was rejected um of course cncf staff pulled it into KubeCon. Um, that's a talk about um, the Prometheus conformance program where we are. So basically we are a victim of a victim of our own success for, for <laughs> a victim for, of your own success. I love it. Yeah, no, but, but it's, it's, it's true, which is a good problem to have and a really bad problem to have both at the same time for the more engineer minded people. It might be non-obvious, uh, but the market, which, which we are basically dominating with the Prometheus project is billions and billions. Um, it's substantial, which means there is a lot of incentive to to play nice with that with that ecosystem. There is a lot of incentive for companies to um, to be perceived as Prometheus compatible. There's two main pathways to do this. One is to invest a ton of work, and several companies and projects have done this. The other is to invest a ton in marketing. Um, they're not exactly equal in outcome, those two approaches. Mm -hmm. And basically we, we realized through support questions, through discussions with various users, with various other projects, with various vendors, um, that we need to actually level set and that we need to introduce a mechanism where any project or vendor can prove to their users, to their customers that yes, they're actually compatible to Prometheus, mm. um, which is unfortunate on the one side, because I would much prefer if we didn't have to do this, but it, sure. I mean, it's similar in Kubernetes world. Um, on the other hand, one of the benefits of this is it has forced us to write a lot of things down. Um, we're not nearly done, um, but we have, written a lot of specifications and such, which we didn't do before, of course, we didn't really need to. But now that we need to test against something, we need to write the specs down. Once we have written the spec down, we can actually version that spec, which allows us to, to have a good upgrade path, which unblocks us in this, we need to support certain things forevermore. Because um, if I declare this 1.0, then I can just make a 2.0 of the Prometheus remote write interface or what have you. And I can say, okay, this will be supported for X amount of time. And after that, you have to change. And all those things are, are the positive um, unintended consequences of the, sure. of the conformance program. And I will talk about this on October 14th, which is basically the yeah. shim of, of um, a talk. Uh, and then I optimize towards Q&A time. Of course... <laughs> We had to record this early enough that we didn't know what the results would be. And I still don't know what all the results will be. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, uh, it's it's a little bit hard to predict with the like, I mean, in general, I have like public speaking is my job. And in general, I still have like some difficulty predicting like how much time I think will need to be spent on Q&A. But it's like extra hard uh, with things virtual and very weird with the, the hybrid model because like I... I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not speaking at KubeCon this year, uh, like I said earlier. And honestly, it's kind of a relief that I'm not speaking at KubeCon this year because I will actually be there in person. And uh, it's going to take some some getting used to the whole people thing, mm -hmm. you know. But um, that's exciting. Y'all have a lot going on, like in a very short period of time, a lot to announce. And geez, are you are you good? Are you getting enough like sleep? Mm, I, I used to have a slide in in the opening for PromCon. Uh, sleep is optional for the week. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Um, I mean, anyone who's listening to this, in particular junior people, um, don't listen to all the people who tell you you must hustle 24-7 and blah, 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 blah. You should actually get some rest and I, I, I pay the price for this. Um, so, yeah, but there are more intense and less intense periods of time. Um, this is currently a more intense one. Yeah, it's uh, that that is a thing worth noting. Uh, if you're attending KubeCon, whether you're doing it virtually or uh, in person, I know that it's like very tempting to just like go, go, go and then party at night and do that a couple of times. But but please get some sleep. Like don't don't run yourself ragged for a conference. I'm not going to like you're, you're not going to see me out until like one in the morning every night of KubeCon. I'm going to get some sleep and you should too. And also drink water, please. You're going to be wearing masks all day. So you're not going to be able to like sip water like you normally would. So make, make sure you, you drink, drink water, please. <laughs> but let me pull up the PromCon schedule and see who some of these speakers are. Uh, Ooh, an EBPF talk. EBPF was super hot uh, last KubeCon. There was a lot of EBPF on the schedule. And it looks like that trend hasn't gone away for sure. Uh, so the schedule is absolutely stacked. I'm going to put this in uh, the overlay so y'all can see it real quick. But you can get to it from promcon.io add a caption there we go so y'all can check out the schedule and uh, you do again need a kubecon ticket to be able to actually attend promcon but uh, when is oh it's, it's October 11th it's Monday it's the day I get there oh hey it's the minus one, I think, or maybe it's now called day zero. Last time we were called day minus one, which was a little bit weird. I don't know what the name is. Um, I think day zero is the 12th. Then we're still minus one. Yeah, I think I you're minus one. Yeah, the main conference starts the 13th. So 12 is day zero. You are you are minus one. Oh. So, yeah. Well, I'll stop by uh, because... I can. I'll get there that day. Uh, there's a lot of competition for colo events, but um, this one seems pretty stacked. And I actually, like, genuinely not putting on a show. Don't don't really know that much about Prometheus. So um, the fact that there is some intro level content on the schedule is uh, extra appealing to me personally. Uh, I can actually learn from that. So that's that's rad. But. Um, if you see register you can also just a moment i'm going to dropping a link the chat, um the, if you want a little bit more of 101 stuff for sure. prometheus observability blah 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 you can find basically all my talks um or almost um there for anyone interested and i include you if you Oh yeah, I will uh, pop those up on the overlay too, so people can see them. Uh, rad. So, is there anything else you want to highlight about Prometheus? Where the project's going? What you're doing at KubeCon? What's happening at PromCon? So, from the Prometheus as a project perspective, we've been putting a lot of effort into into appearing more open and i'm choosing this phrasing extremely deliberately um we've always been very open i i i've been doing open source for two decades i i i, I strongly believe that we've always been uh, extremely open in all ways of participation that being said it was often a little bit opaque on how mm -hmm. to actually get involved um, there are also some some cyclic discussions and such, but by and large, those doors were open. Um, yet we were often perceived as not being easy to engage with, um, which is 
unfortunate, basically. And we've been putting a ton of work into into fixing that perception, um, which means, for example, that all the uh, Dev Summits are fully open. Uh, everyone can join. Anyone can uh, suggest stuff for the agenda. Um, they're on YouTube. Um, anyone can also join during the thing and uh, is strongly encouraged to speak up uh, with whatever they have. Like those kinds of things. Um, we have office hours. We have um, we have uh, working groups now, like for TSTB or for the documentation and such, um, which are fully open to join. Um, we're aggressively trying to increase the contact surface for people to to come and join. Because you were saying we have a lot of resources. Honestly, that's not the case. Um, we, sh given the size, like when I compare it to, for example, Kubernetes, it's um, yeah. Slight difference. <laughs> well, yeah, compared um, to Kubernetes, oh, for sure, and like no, but basically, we we have half a dozen people who who really consistently uh, chip away um, between half a dozen and ten. Like we have, I think, seventeen or sixteen maintainers as of right now, or team members with a few more maintainers for subsystems, um, and none of them are full-time on Prometheus. So um, absolutely, we have more than enough work and we are really, really trying to to get this across that those doors are really, really open. Like um, wide open, like you're begging people yeah. to walk through them. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, mean, and I get it. It can, be like, it can be overwhelming um, trying to figure out how to contribute to an open source project. And it can be, it can be like, a, it can feel really daunting right? You feel sometimes, especially new developers, will feel like maybe they're stepping on people's toes. What if I do something wrong and embarrass myself in public? I don't understand the Git flow for this. Oh, they don't really need my help because I'm not an expert. So how could I possibly contribute anything? But y'all, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, speaking as like somebody who has once felt like that, um, usually the maintainers are like really friendly and you, you can just reach out and, and ask if something is unclear about the contribution process and it doesn't have to be code contributing, contributing docs or like samples or something is also super helpful. And often like that is a thing that open source projects are super lacking in. Um, they don't, they, they can't often hire technical writers. So like we, we have to write the docs ourselves um, which, you know, I wish we could all have technical writers and pay them what they're worth, but the reality is that like we can't. So, um, well, can people reach out to you if they have like concerns or, or like their trepidations about contributing yeah. to Prometheus? Absolutely. Like we, we yeah, absolutely. Rad. Uh, you want to tell people where they can find you online? Uh, yeah. Um, at twitch on Twitter is is how most people find me these days. Um, Richie eight at richieh .org if you do email, but I I sometimes have a little bit much email in my private account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, relatable. We have the Prometheus um, developers and users mailing lists. Uh, we also have an overview. Just a moment, I'm going to link it to you in a second. Um, sure. Where you can see the various community channels. Um, just a moment. It's here. And speaking in particular of documentation, um, like website updates or, or, or website tech on, on the back end, writing documentation is, is one of those things where we can really, really uh, use some help. Um, in particular, of course, we are currently refocusing the documentation from, from just a reference documentation as a first and foremost um, novice to intermediate documentation. Um, we've been trying for half a year to, to, to build up both at the same time, but basically for no one can really invest the time to, to change the website as deeply as we needed to. And the people who created it left to some part. Oh. Um, basically, we're stuck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we're now just changing the main documentation uh, to, to be really user-friendly because that's one of those things which which we are not doing very well historically, to be honest. Sure. Of course, we keep having those waves of adoption. Um, and from from the inside, you can actually really see those waves coming from different areas um, just arriving in, in the Prometheus ecosystem. And too often, it's not as easy to onboard yourself onto this whole thing as, as it should be. 
I mean, I'm biased, but I would say that Prometheus is actually the easiest to use tool which you have in the monitoring slash observability space by far. Again, I'm biased, but um, you are, but that's okay. You're you're here to brag. It's not even bragging. Like I, I've, I've. I my I come from the operations side. Uh, my my sanity really depends on on point alerting, uh, and on on being able to resolve incidents which are popping up left and right quickly and without losing too much sleep. It's um, yeah, and, and having played with or having depended on a lot of different systems, I can honestly say I've never seen anything which is as easy to use and as performant and as overall good as Prometheus. But that's not reflected in documentation. Um, <laughs> and in particular, if you have, like I said, we have a, a functional language to do vector math on your on your, on your your data, uh, and that's based on label sets. You can make n-dimensional matrices instead of having tree-like structures. And all of this is super nice, but if I say it, it sounds super scary, and you won't know what that actually means. And there needs to be an easy way to actually onboard onto this thing to to get familiar with it. Yeah. Like if you're already doing Kubernetes, it's it's kind of easier because at least the label sets and everything are already clear. But the thing that you have literally one single binary which you start, and everything is already running. And then you just have one, two, ten different binaries, or you point it to your Kubernetes cluster or your T zone transfer in DNS or what have you, and all of a sudden the data starts coming in. Honestly, that's not reflected in 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 our documentation, that ease of, of stuff. And we need to change this or we are changing it. So you and really need help. help with the docs. Okay. Yes. Noted. I will be happy to hustle for that on Twitter because good, good docs are a thing I am uh, deeply passionate about. Uh, and bad docs are something that I spend a lot of time complaining about. Uh, we do have a question from Twitch. Uh, if you've, we've probably, we've got time to get through this question. Do the observability talks that you mentioned go over how to get started creating useful metrics, dashboards, and whatnot? No, they don't. Uh, but um, I'm currently collecting um, stuff for a choose-your-own-observability adventure type of thing. Oh. I want to create a lot of small, like one to maybe three-minute uh, pieces. Um, which are a directed graph of learning. So you can say I'm I'm starting here and I want to get to that place in in understanding what that space actually is, and as part of that, I want to go through a few of those. Um, I have very strong opinions on uh, on what proper dashboards are and and what you should do and what you should not do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we can touch. Do we have more questions? Then if not, we can just no. You can you can go on that if you want. Go for um, it. Assuming Grafana, um, but um, it's it's equivalent for or it's applicable to pretty much all systems. Um, first, uh, if you have filled graph like with with the um, where you have that pretty line and you you fill with color underneath, yeah. uh, please don't do this unless you have cumulatives where you signal w uh, that you're actually adding something versus just visualizing a line. They're super pretty, but if you overuse them, it gets really confusing and part of making good dashboards. Open parentheses, this is not perfect for accessibility if you overload the visual system, but it's useful for, for humans as a general rule. But you still need to take, like you need to have more, more not basic, but um, more um, high contrast and such uh, dashboards also. That being said, um, that's a super quick way to visualize if something is just a line or if it's just uh, if it's something which is cumulative. If you have something which is a finite resource with which has an upper limit, a natural upper limit, but also goes up and down, the thing which I like doing is that on the left y-axis I have whatever the actual count is, and I come from the networking space, so that's super common that use case um, where you have x amount of traffic on an interface but at a glance it's really hard to see if that's 10 megabyte or megabit or 10 gigabit or just 10 kilobit okay. um, if it, because it's just a line going like so so on the right hand side i like to do the percentage so i see the absolute usage of the thing at the same time so even if i have a super flat graph on the left uh, side y-axis which i want because this increases the vertical resolution dynamically um, to, to whatever level of, 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 of changes I have at that time or in that time frame, I can still at a glance see 
what what the absolute usage is. But you need to discern the two, so you make this left one li uh, thick and the right one thin. And with by doing that, you have already like you see it once and you already know what's happening. If you have anything which goes both ways, again, I come from networking, you flip one side. So incoming goes up, outgoing goes down. And with with just those three things, for anything which is, is basically receiving and sending anything, uh, you already have a super nice, um, super nice basic um, graph, which trans, uh, transports a ton of information um, in a super quick way which humans are basically evolved to to assess really quickly and, and understand really quickly, which is yeah, why I like doing this. And don't overload it. Like dashboards with 20 things and they're sparkly and, and colorful and everything. They're beautiful, but they're so hard to read. I get overwhelmed yes. looking at them immediately. And it just, I don't know, my eyes tend to just like glaze over everything yes. at that point once it, I don't really want more than like four to six graphs on a dashboard at any given time before like at, beyond that. It's not, it's just too much for me to look at. Um, we have another question from Twitch. If you've got time for it. Um, is there an abstraction available or in the works for Prometheus? Since I think it's pretty hard to get started. What? Does the person who asked, what, what do you mean by abstraction? If you can just follow up on, on that question. Uh, well, let's see. They can they can hear us with just a, a few seconds of delay. So um, hopefully that person will reply and follow up with a little bit more more context um, on the pretty hard to get started. Um, that that is an issue that can be fixed by people contributing to improve the documentation. Yep. Uh, and one thing. Which is like, if you're new to Prometheus, you have one ability, property, superpower, which, which I and everyone else on Prometheus team lack. We have the curse of the expert. We know how the thing mm -hmm. is supposed to work, so we don't hit those walls. Like we, we can deliberately find other walls to hit and corner cases and such. But as we already have a mental model of how that thing should be working, we tend to not hit those walls and we tend to not think about all the things which someone who's new to the space might be thinking of. Right. I've For over two decades, I've always begged people, if they come new, make notes of what is hard and then deliver those notes, ideally already with a PR, but even just a list. So super useful. And if it seems basic, it's still super useful. Of course, those things are invisible to us. Yeah, they do. Um, it's, it's a huge thing. It's why whenever I'm building like a, a workshop or writing a new tutorial, um, I, for, if it's, if it's geared towards beginners, the first thing I do is, um, borrow some students from a local boot camp and I give the workshop or the tutorial to them and mm -hmm. take note of like where they run into problems, like where I forgot to explain something because I'm an expert. I, I just forget to, that not everybody has context. And this is a thing that's inherent in human nature. It's not like, it's, it's hard to avoid. It's something we all do. Um, they did follow up. Uh, a like a GUI configuration that converts to code. Think of the abstractions currently built for Kubernetes, like Tilt. Okay. Um, yes and no. Um, there are bits and pieces, or there are uh, large uh, pieces uh, in in on the Grafana side, um, where where certain things can can be done in UI. Um, I think quite a few of those are are paid closed source features, but I don't actually mm -hmm. know. Um, I don't tend to use them. I, I prefer the other way. So um, I don't really know. Um, I yeah, mean, it depends on what you want to configure. Because usually if you want a guided user interface, that means you are not very strong on automation. And that might be enticing when you get started, but it's almost always the wrong choice long-term. Um, so I would suggest trying to just write those things out as snippets in, in files as you go and literally write them by hand so you can deploy them automatically. And then as you go, migrate them to, to actually fully automating. And that might mean that you realize you don't have a CMDB or you don't know where this and that service uh, list is living or it's not up to date or what have you. But those kinds of things are actually a positive 
course, if you if you consider observability not as just alerting, but as actually being able to understand that complete thing, which is your whatever system, um, those are required anyway. And the fact that you don't have them and you would like to have an easy way to, to basically plaster over not having them is understandable. And I, I, I totally get why you want this. But you're usually basically just avoiding doing work which you should be doing anyway or someone else should be doing anyway. Um, of course, the overall system will become more automated, which actually frees you up from doing that toil and you can invest in more tooling and more automation over time, um, which is basically what Prometheus is designed for. It's it's designed to be fully automated. So if somebody is trying to get started and they're, they're struggling... Um, because they're not very strong on automation or they're just they're just very, very new in general. Can they go through the Prometheus community for help? Yes. Yeah. We have we have like um, I don't know if you if you showed that uh, that overview. Um, there you go. We have Slack. We have our. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, we have mailing lists. We have Matrix. We have Slack. We have IRC. We have arguably too many things. Uh, we have those GitHub discussions. Um, we have discourse. So there's more than enough ways to uh, to get in touch. We also have office hours, which are in different time zones or happen at different times. So people from different time zones can uh, can attend, um, where we just walk through whatever uh, someone might be having trouble with. There's tons and tons and tons of ways to to get this feedback and or this this help. And the nice thing is we have a lot of of people who who also help out. It's not just us. Um, I mean, ideally, once you learn it, stick around, help others, pay it forward. But even if not, um, get in contact and and tell us what you have issues with, issues with. Yeah, make note, make a note every time you run into a wall. I do this every time I'm like working with a new product in general. Like anytime I'm using a new open source tool, uh, when I'm first trying to like stand it up or run through the the tutorials, the quick start guides, whatever, I make a note of everywhere I run into a problem or everywhere I think that something wasn't clear enough in the documentation or sometimes the documentation is just straight up wrong. That that happens less frequently, but it, it does happen with some tools. Uh, I make a note of it and then I either contribute the changes back or if I know the maintainer, I will like reach out to them personally and hand it over as an assist. It's, it, it really is appreciated stuff like that. So if you're new and you're running into trouble, like open source project maintainers do want their tools to be easy to use. Yes. Like we, we, we want that. It's not always achievable, but we want it. So, you know, yeah. tell us when things are a problem. Um, we are running up on time. Is there, are there any closing words other than, uh, Register for PromCon, follow Cloud Native TV on Twitch, follow you on Twitter. Well, be excellent to each other and hopefully see you in person next year. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Um, KubeCon, the next KubeCon EU is in um, Valencia, Spain. Yes. Right? So uh, hopefully I'll see you in Valencia. I'll be, I'll be in Valencia. Will you be in Valencia? Maybe if COVID allows it, uh, yeah. like I, I didn't miss a single KubeCon. No, I missed I missed two Chinese one. Other than that, I don't think I missed a single one. Um, other than COVID reasons. Yeah. So. Well, hopefully things are a little bit more controlled by then, and we'll all feel safer going to conferences. I'm still pretty um, questionable about it, but mm -hmm. I will be at KubeCon NA. So, um, y'all, I'll see you in a, in a week, um, virtually and live, uh, you, I will be seeing vir virtually not live, but, um, thank you so much for coming on here and answering my questions and talking about Prometheus and PromCon and monitoring and, um, shouting out the community and y'all, uh, contribute to open source. Thanks for having me. Support the tools you use. Um, yeah. And get Thanks vaccinated. And get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated. Do seriously. seriously, if someone is uncertain about the underlying science and such, while I'm not an expert, I will, if you're honest about it, I will take the time and, and try and answer questions. If Yeah. Good. All right. 
please, well, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. If you did get vaccinated, thank you. Uh, if you didn't, con consider it. Please, please do it. Um, thanks for everything. Thanks for talking to me. You've been fantastic. I hope PromCon is a huge success. And I hope your announcements and your and your talks go well. It's a lot of talks you got to give. Um, Twitch, thanks for thanks for watching. And I guess Twitter. I'm, I'm assuming a bunch of y'all came from Twitter, too. Um, any closing words for you? No. Okay. Excellent to each other. Bye, everybody. See ya. <laughs>